Human Impact on Water Resources. This is section 27.4, found on page 730. Human, humans depend on water in many ways. In 1995, the United States consumed 378 billion liters of water per day. Since 1960, fresh water use has nearly doubled and the demand is expected to continue to increase. Most people use fresh water in their homes for bathing, drinking, cooking, and washing. The irrigation of crops also requires water, but much of it is wasted because it often evaporates or seeps into the ground before it can be used by crops. Still, the greatest demand on water supplies come from industry, including power plants that use water for cooling purposes. Figure 2723 shows how water supplies in the United States are distributed among users. Because water supplies are not distributed evenly on Earth, some areas have less water than is needed. When water supplies are limited, conflicts occur between the needs of people and the needs of others, the needs of other users, including wildlife, water pollution. Pollution is another area in which humans have an impact on water supplies. Some supplies of water have been polluted by human activities and are no longer usable. Water pollution sources are grouped into two main types. Point source generate pollution from a single point of origin such as sewage treatment plant or an industrial site with non-point sources, while non-point sources generate pollution from wildly spread areas. Point sources. Common point sources of water pollution include bacteria and viruses that enter water systems through improper disposal of sewage and toxic waste that enter streams from both illegal dumping and accidental spills. In addition, industries divert water from streams to use in manufacturing processes from streams to use in manufacturing processes may return polluted water to the streams as shown in figure 27, 24. Non-point sources. Rainwater, a non-point source of water pollution, absorbs air polluted pollutants and may become acidic itself. Rainfall also dissolves pesticides and fertilizers and carries them into streams as it drains from farms and lawns. Runoff from roads and parking lots that includes oil, gasoline, and other chemicals is another non-point source of water pollution. Pollution of groundwater. Leaking chemical storage barrels, underground gasoline storage tanks, landfills, road salts, nitrates from fertilizers, sewage from subject tanks, and other pollution pollutants can, pollutants can seep into the ground and foul underground water supplies. Polluted Groundwater may find its way into the drinking water supplies of people who rely on wells. Once groundwater is contaminated, the pollutants can be very difficult to remove. Pollution in the ocean. Although human activities have the greatest impact on freshwater supplies, pollution of water, of ocean water, is also a concern. For example, I mean, excuse me, for years it was, though, that the oceans were so big that human activities could not affect them. This may be be true for the oceans as a whole, but it is not true for near shore regions. Nearly 50% of the U.S. population lives near coastlines in areas such as San Francisco, shown in figure 2725. Pollutants from such cities often end up estuaries and other near shore regions. Sewage water is a major source of near shore pollution around coastal areas. Even after treatment, human wastewater contains high levels of nitrogen and phosphorus. These, ni these nutrients can create blooms of kinobacteria that later die and use up oxygen in the water as they decompose. Some coastal sites dispose of their untreated sewage by pumping it through pipelines that run along the ocean floor and extend far enough into the ocean these practices can create large dead zones on the ocean floor where there are no living organisms. You will identify possible types and sources of pollution along a hypothetical coastline in the mapping geo lab at the end of this chapter. Reducing water pollution. In recent decades, many steps have been taken to prevent and reduce water pollution as people have found that it is much cheaper and more effective to prevent pollution than it is to clean it up at clean it up later. Two major laws have been passed in the United States to combat water pollution, the Safe Drinking Water Act and the Clean Water Act. The Safe Drinking Water Act of 1974 was 
designed to ensure that everyone in the United States has access to safe drinking water. Progression is, made, is being made, but many water supplies still do not meet the standards consistently. In 1998, 20% of public water supplies were in violation of the act, at least. Progression is being made, but many water supplies still do not meet the standards consistently. In 1998, 20% of public water supplies were in violation of the act as at least one once in a one year period. The, low, the goal of the Safe Drinking Act is to reduce this number to less than 5% by the year 20, by the year 2005. The Clean Water Act of 1972 is the primary federal law that protects our nation's waters. The act was amended in 1977, 1981, and again in 1987. The two main goals of the Clean Water Act was to eliminate discharge of pollutants into the river streams, lakes, and wetlands, and to restore water quality to levels that allow for recreational use of waters, including fishing and swimming. One positive result of this act is shown in Figure 2726. In the Clean Water Act, is the Clean Water Act working? Since 1972, the number of people served by sewage treatment plants has increased from 85 million to 190 million. During that time period, the annual rate of Wetland loss had decreased from 146,000 HA to about 32,000 HA. Two-thirds of the nation's waters are now safe for swimming and fishing, compared to only one-third in 1972. However, more important improvements must be made. In 1998, 35% of U.S. rivers and streams were still in violation of established water quality levels at some point during the year water conservation. When there is not enough water to go around, populations have two choices, decrease demand or develop new supplies. In many cases, new supplies are not readily available or may be too expensive to develop. Therefore, water conservation is the most common solution to excessive demand. Because irrigation can waste so much water, efficient irrigation practices can greatly reduce the demand for water. Landscaping with plants that requires less water, as illustrated in Figure 2727, monitoring soil moisture, improving delivery systems, and raising water prices have all been effective in minimizing the amount of water used for irrigation. Industri industries can also conserve water. Many are developing ways to recycle cooling water and wastewater, especially when they are charged high rates for water usage. Manufacturing processes often can be can use recycled water or they can be redesigned to conserve water. If there's a leaky faucet in your home in the United States alone, is there a leaky faucet in your home? In the United States alone, 20 to 35 percent of the water taken from public water supply is lost through leaky pipes, toilets, bathtubs, and faucets. Some cities don't even have water meters to measure and thus change for the public water that households use. Not surprisingly, when water Meters were introduced in Boulder, Colorado. The use of water was reduced by more than 30%. People tend to fix leaks and conserve water when they have to pay for it. If every person used a little less water, the water conserved would add up to a large volume. Installing more efficient shower heads is shown in figure 27, 28, and toilets is just one way to decrease personal water consumption. Consider how you use water. What is what are some of the ways you might conserve water in your everyday life?